A very good afternoon. Good evening to everybody. Today is the session for this particular session. Don't be required any time. So let's not waste time in introducing both of them. Whether it is Professor Shanta Kumar, Vice Chancellor of Gujarat National Law University, or Dr. Ruff, who is the Dean for Research and Publication. I think instead of doing, I mean, instead of going in for all these activities, I'll leave the floor to you to interact with the students and and let them have the fun or the experience of the true research that is delivered. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. A warm welcome once again. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the second time I'm taking this session for uh, PhD coursework. Initially, we were supposed to take class on uh, designing mixed methods research, but while looking at it, framing research questions, somewhere we are missing it. So I thought, let me, myself and Professor Shantikumar, we thought of giving some kind of thesis. So we're not going to teach how to write it, but we can tell you what are the things you should consider while designing your research questions, while developing your research questions. At the same time, today I'm going to, we are going to cover about designing mixed methods. What is mixed method is all about it. We know what is quantitative, what is qualitative. If you mix it, that is what mixed method. Why we need to study mixed method? There are a number of questions we are hanging, right? So we are going to apply what is mixed methodology, and we are going to tell you what are the things you should consider while framing your research design. What are methodology you are going to choose it? What kind of applications you should process it? Okay. So first, I will start with framing research questions. We know that research question starts with your area of interest. We hang around 52, including faculty members, everyone. One or the other day, maybe at UG level, PG level, doctorate, as a recognition, practitioners, we all do research as a part of academic work, as a part of understanding new concepts, new phenomena. The main object of doing research, different for different persons. In case some of you like, Benjamin wanted to do research in order to fill the gap. There is a lot of knowledge is there, but still there is some gap is there. So she will explore entire literature review. She will come up some kind of gaps in the research. She will based on that, she will come up with some questions. Next we have Asta. She comes up saying that sir, this is one of the important core area. Go, the government is having a lot of policies, a lot of schemes. But still, the problem is not solved yet. So I want to bring some, I want to do some action oriented research. I want to evaluate existing policies. Based on the existing policies, I want to refer, I want to refer new policies. I want to bring some amendments, maybe in the acts, in the laws. So whatever knowledge is all about it, you are going to contribute it. Maybe some of you want to develop the test, develop the theories. Some of you wanted to test existing theories. So our research questions, research objectives, hypothesis basically comes from literature review. How much of a thorough knowledge you have, at least basic knowledge about your area of work, that much uh, that will easily help you to come up with your best research questions, best research objectives, uh, I can say that good hypothesis. But there is a lot of confusion. If you look at any of the research methodology workshops, I can guarantee that 80 to 90 percent of the workshop, I can 95 percent of the workshops, they won't discuss about what is research question, how to write, frame, how to frame research questions. Though it is one of uh, research questions considered backbone of any research, you know, research objectives and research questions are considered backbone of the research. Because you're trying to investigate a particular phenomena, there is a lot of uncertainty there, you're trying to explore it, you're going to investigate it based on the question that you're going to ask. Okay. Now, today, we are making an attempt to tell you what are the things you should consider while developing or framing your research questions. We all of us having, take for instance, I 54. Someone is working on IPR, someone is working on environment. These are all, if you talk about environment, it is completely ocean. There are a number of research projects you can carry out. But how to narrow down it, you know? Now, you are having environmental, you are interested in environmental research, but you need to look at it, what are the current trends? What are the current problems you hang it? How much research has been done in this particular area? If I'm going to research a particular topic, whether it is already repeated, whether I'm going to repeat the same thing, what kind of contribution I'm going to make it out of? So you need to look at it, okay, environment, that sub com, sub things, within that sub things. So you need to come up with what exactly you are going to do that. Take for instance, if I want to do it on women, women is a ocean, you know, it's phenomena is ocean. 
I want to do it women's health. If you, within women's health, there are a number of issues. Whether you're going to deal with uh, denotified tribal health or scheduled caste tribal health, what kind of health issues we are going to handle it? Uh, is there any problem with voice? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is clear. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah. Now, when it comes to women, I'm choosing like women and cancer. Again, I should narrow my my supervisor tell me that you should still narrow down. Again, I'm going to do research, lot of research on it. I'll come back again. Okay, women, this is those are suffering with breast cancer. Okay, otherwise, denotified rivals and their health seeking behavior. Okay, teenagers and their health habits, food habits, and its impact on their health. So, what exactly we are going to focus on it? So, you should narrow down your topic. Then only you can able to come up with specific research. Okay, now. Just small exercise here. I'm just giving two minutes time. Okay, just go through list of questions. People say that this question is bad. This question is good. On what basis? Whether this particular question is good? On what basis the particular question is bad? I'm just going to ask randomly. I'm going to pick one of your name. I'm going to ask you why this particular question is wrong. Why this particular? If something is good, like good question, bad question. Why it is good? Why it is not good? You should tell me. Okay. I'm just giving two minutes time. Please go through all the questions. Uh, may I, sir? Yes, please. Uh, so, so the first question, uh, which is what effect does social media have on people's mind, seems to be gender in nature. While the second question, which is uh, which states that what the what effect does uh, daily use of Twitter have on the attention span of under 16 is uh, more specific as to which social media application and which age group is uh, to be targeted. So I think the first one can be said to be a bad research question and the second one can be a good research question. So you're, it is, you're telling it is bad because it is not very specific, right? Right. right. So while framing your research questions, we have to be very clear. There is one concept called finer. F I N E R means your research question should be feasible. You should be in a position to complete your research in a particular period of time, whether it is UZ, PZ, PhD. You should be in a position to complete it. Now, the kind of questions you are going to have, what are the questions I have been here? You always need to check it. Is it feasible? Is it specific? Is it ethically correct? Whether, take for instance, we are working on some animals or if we are working with some tribals. The kind of tool that we need to prepare it. Is it ethically what approval from different uh, research institutions, policy institutions? So you need to check it out. Okay. And how far it is relevant? Take for instance, uh, we always say that your research should be novel. You no, know? there should be some kind of originality in your research, whatever you carry it out. It's not be like something repeated every time, every time. Why are you asking it? People are there to read your articles. People are there to you are going to contribute some knowledge in the field. So Finer is one thing, specific, feasible, interesting. As a researcher, you are going to choose your topic not because of what your supervisor is telling to you. Like institutions like GNU, we are most of the time used to give what is your area of interest because you are going to carry, you are going to do this journey. You are not going to study, you are going to do journey. PhD is a journey in your life. You know, you should enjoy and you should feel that, okay, this is what my career. After long five years period of time, I am going to be in this particular field. So, you are going to, you should have some passion while doing your research, you know. Feasible, interest, novelty, ethically approved, and relevant. Uh, just may I ask second one, second question? I'll just take one more question. May I, sir? Yes, this sir. is Soham. Yes, Soham, please. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, sir, actually I have gone through the, yeah, actually sir, I have gone through the complete question here, sir. So what I find uh, is that uh, one question is little broad, means it, it's very broad and vague, and in comparison to other questions, some questions are very, uh, up means it is very targeted oriented, it is narrower. So I guess those who are narrower will give us the really such a better option, how to collect the data and where to collect the data. In, 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 in comparison to those questions, those who are broad and little vague, sir. Uh, that was my observation with respect to this, this slide, sir. Thank you, Soham. Uh, other than broad and narrow, here is, as I mentioned it, are in a position to complete in a given particular period of time. 
take for instance i'll take the last one like what factors led to women gaining the active participation in indian elections now if you're going to choose this particular topic as a part of your phd you no know, where is your focus some way women you're talking about participation in indian elections you are talking about particular category of women or particular background so i want you should focus but research questions should be because at the end of the day you have to justify your research questions at the end of the day you have to justify your research title that you are going to have it and one more thing is just like research objectives research questions give directions to you you know otherwise what happens is you are going to collect data from all over entire about women but at the end of the day you are going to get the questions you are going to deal by so many faculty members so many examiners okay but if there is a clarity the kind of question you are going to ask you can tell supervisor you can tell examiner this is what my research is all about it you can ask me within this particular boundaries so it's research is all about how we are going to justify your research questions research objectives okay so i just thought these are some of the questions you should explore it so that again i mentioned that feasible it should be interesting it should be relevant you should be focused okay you should be ethically approved so these are things you should keep in mind while framing your research questions okay sir excuse me sir excuse me sir excuse me sir sir can you please throw some light with respect to this ethically approved means how can we means uh, draw this standard means what is the how 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 can we understand whether this is uh, coming under the category of or not for example suppose if we are doing any um, research with respect to the prostitution or something like that sir so in that condition how can we draw this as a line sir i'm sorry to disturb sir please okay right. no issues fine see uh, ethically approved take for instance uh, we did as a part of bsw course uh, one project on denotified tribals in north gujarat there is a district called banaskata district where we hang disa taluka disa and tawara taluka okay they are denoted denoted by tribes basically they are considered as ex criminals they are considered as born as criminal tribes we want to understand their health seeking behavior their social economic conditions i mean uh, i want to understand are, are there any changes in their occupation patterns and if there are changes what kind of impact is having on their health seeking behavior okay or uh, maybe because of time limitation this is a part of the student research field work everything we have taken a quantitative research work okay we have taken the quantitative research and we went to the field but we didn't get permission to enter into the city enter into the particular village because the moment we enter into the particular village uh, the husbands and children of this particular wife or the ladies they'll drag you inside the, the moment if you say i won't come they'll beat you if it requires they'll also kill you now we have taken the help of police that particular nearby police stations and we have taken the head of uh, village headman okay and we said that this is what research is all about we are doing it this is the purpose of research you are not going to solve any problems but my students wanted to understand what is the culture of your tribals you know for tribals we wanted to spend a little bit time to understand your social economic conditions okay i am talking from the ethnographic research point of view because if you are going to write down about something about tribals without their approval without getting permission from these people it may have some impact on it they won't allow you to that and ethically so for research you can focus like whenever you are conducting research on animals like take for most of the time we used to hear people are conducting uh, vaccinations on rat monkeys rats they'll conduct before implementing experimenting with human beings they'll experiment with rats if you talk with any science student if you hang biology student maybe they can give us an example then then you have to get the ethical approval with regard to how many rats how many maybe as a part of lab experiment okay so that way there is one thing i can uh, point out here one example with regard to ethical improve, approval research ethics like maintaining confidentiality is got it sir thank you very much sir okay. thank you sir thank you sir yeah yes so thank you and next one other than feasible realistic and time relevant you should also focus on what kind of methodology you are going to use on take for instance how do you a lot of uh, around five questions have been it each methodology have different style of writing research questions when i talk about quantitative we all discussed i think uh, we already had sessions on what is quantitative research what is qualitative research quantitative research is all about talking about numbers 
export means variables okay qualitative research is a process oriented context oriented talks about experiences okay everything we already discussed about it now within the quantitative we have descriptive research experimental research i'm taking one or two examples okay what is meant by descriptive research means you are trying to describe particular phenomena what it is happening it it talks about up to what extent is happening it. what is the percentage okay what level of frequency so the number of question talks about everything to explain in terms of numbers okay now when i talk about relation compared to based questions it talks about is there difference between different groups okay take for instance i give an example of what is the difference in daily calorie take intake of delinquency boys and girls here i'm trying to look at it what are the differences between boys and girls in terms of their, their intake calories intake of the food so your method looking at your research questions people will tell you what kind of methodology you are going to use it what kind of methodology you should use it you know so it is very simple things but it carries a lot of ways because do you remember in during first orientation day professor shulakanam professor shantamal said that everyone agree that research is all about systematic investigation of facts and figures means you are doing the research everything is logically connected it's not that i can put any title i can do any research right i can write any kind of research objectives i can use any kind of sampling everything is interconnected because that's why we are talking about research onion i hope you can able to recollect we have discussed about different layers how each layer is connected with the subsequent layers upcoming layers right so here i given first one is descriptive research how frequently do male and female students of gnl upload photos and comments on their users photos on facebook each week similarly i have qualitative questions does the emotional instability created by experiencing diverse increase the chances that diverse parents will physically abuse their children next one we have comparative based questions next one again qualitative question next one is again correlation based question that is relation based questions where we will see cause and effect relationship where we will see associations where we will look at uh, relation between two different variables okay so while writing your research questions there are two important things you should consider it one is in terms of final feasible realistic relevant ethically approved okay second one is what kind of methodology you are going to use it how we are going to frame your questions so these are the some of the things i just i want to highlight it and just based on experience instead of putting in front of you to give some kind of insight what you think while writing how you should consider while writing your research questions and research objectives okay so with this i'm just moving to next one if you don't have, have there any questions i just given two points anyone would like to have any questions i uh, would like to add any point further okay and this moving towards next mix of research methods you now here as you can all see that i already used this particular slide in previous class that is while discussing research on it here we have six visually impaired persons who are looking at a particular object they don't know what is particular it is animal is it an object what it is a tree they don't know anything about it and each one person different kind of understanding after touching the particular hand this particular object and each one will say that this is what this must be this one this must be this one now how we are going to contribute the knowledge now all people should gather together they should look at each one perspective point of view then you can come to know that okay this is what this is a this is a elephant you can able to understand at the end of the after analyzing all the findings you can able to say that this is what this particular object is all about it now if you are not considering other persons other angles other perceptions point of view you won't be able to come up with proper knowledge you won't be able to contribute uh, what are the contribute you are now going to whatever knowledge you are going to contribute it is going to be one sided you won't be giving considerations to other perspectives point of view okay so that is the intention of presenting this particular uh, image next one i'm not going to spend much time because we have spent nearly one and a half hour in previous class there is research on it but i thought of giving glance before talking about mixed methodology 
we all know that quantitative research is all about deductive research it is going to be completely uh, objectively based we are going to whatever you are going to experience it whatever you are going to test it that is what your knowledge is all about it okay everything depends on numbers on the other hand we hang qualitative research which is inductive based completely based on subjective completely based on constructing the knowledge we are constructing knowledge based on our interaction with the respondents how the person experiencing this particular phenomena so there are a number of uh, tools methods we have discussed as a part of research onion uh, for the glance again i just brought a couple of characteristics if there is any point which i need to highlight let me know otherwise i'll move to the next slide okay is there any particular criteria which i need to explain just let me know i'll explain it today we hang research objective we all know so what is we are doing quality to research in order to explore it whereas on the other hand we are going to explain or we are going to predict or we are going to describe it or we are going to test your hypothesis Next of reality, you know, when it comes to qualitative research, multiple realities. We are constructing knowledge. Each person uh, experiences particular phenomena in different manners. Okay. Whereas when it comes to qualitative research, it is completely based on objectivity. Reality is the only one. Groups smaller, not randomly selected, because they are all based on purposive sampling, like purpose sampling, quota sampling, convenience sampling. Okay. Whereas when it comes to quantitative, we have probability sampling stratified sampling okay there are number of sampling methods which you already gone through it okay now when it comes to variables here context based whereas when it comes to quantitative we are selecting one or two variables maybe more than three variables as well okay nature of observation study behavior natural environment whereas here we can also conduct in quantitative research we can also conduct experiments we can choose particular variables you can see is there any cause and effect relationship forms of data collected open ended observations field notes reflections whereas when it comes to quantitative data it is completely based on structure you are going to the field with pre designed tool means you can able to control lot of errors lot of in your research okay whereas when it comes to qualitative data you will go with the preliminary understanding of your research problem and data questions like interview questions depends on the kind of questions you are going to ask my second question depends on the kind of response i am going to get it from my respondent means depends on the kind of probing skills you have the kind of rapport skills you are going to build you know how much you are going to make your respondent confident in the particular field so that is what then type of analysis we are going to identify different patterns we are going to coding teams you are going to identify whereas here there are number of statistics basic to advanced level objectivity we already discussed role of researcher final report I hope sir, all the results are clear. Criteria, sir. Yes, please. Sir, sir. Can you please explain the study of whole under qualitative and variables? Study of whole. Whole. Yes, sir. Where it is study of whole? So it's written there uh, under qualitative uh, okay. in the in the row of variables. Study of the whole, comma not okay. variables. So, yes. See, take for instance when I am talking about uh, denote for tribals. Okay, if I want to understand your culture, okay, I won't go with pre-designed tool like I want to ask this question, that question. Okay, I'll go. I have a specific understanding. I want to understand what are the health-seeking behaviors. I'm just going to use participant observations. I'll try to observe it. This is whole context. Okay, it is context-based. And so, uh, whereas, no, whereas it comes. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, no, no. Please, you continue then, Ada. But as when it comes to quantitative research, I'm going to look at it. Okay, there are changes in uh, occupations. Like earlier, he was working as a uh, cobbler. Now he's working in different positions. Now his standard of life is improving. What kind of health improvements are taking place? I have two specific variables. One is changes in occupations, and second one is impact on health-seeking behavior. Okay. Whereas when it comes to study of whole, I'm not. talking about particular one variable two variable i'm going to look at culture from perspective of day to day practices 
how they are practicing it in terms of food, in terms of culture, in terms of child rearing. Okay. Though I have specific objectives, but their objectives guides me. Okay. That's why it's called context based. In uh, in one of the previous classes, we were told that basically we were we were being you know taught that research problems are similar or you know it's a synonym for research variables. So is this variable? I understand this variable. I understood that variable. But are these two variables same? Your research so, variables comes from research questions or research objectives hypothesis, right? From where you are getting your research hypothesis or research questions? From the problem only. Problem, yes. Yes. So there is a direct link. So this variable is it, that variable and this variable is same. There is no difference. See, uh, I'm doing my research on denotable trials. I collected a lot of literature review. Hmm. I identified gaps. Looking at the magnitude of the problems, after looking at different dimensions of the problem, I am framing a couple of variables. What I want to do it. Looking at the time period, availability of the resources. I am coming second my as for my interest. Second variables. So which variable that is you have to say, look at the context. What you want to do it. Okay. okay. Basically, your variables come from research uh, problem or literature review. Okay. Okay. Register, please. Uh, your voice is not all, uh, clear. Can you can you repeat it? Research quantitative uh, list. It was written that uh, it's a double blind study, right? If I follow quantitative, uh, did not be double blind. Quantity is double blind. Yeah. It's written there. Uh, participant characteristics are deliberately hidden. So uh, all quantitative studies need not be double blind studies, right? Uh, see, which point you're talking, which criteria you're talking about it? Uh, role of researcher. Role of researcher. Role of researchers and their biases may be known to the participants in the study. Participant characters may be known to the researcher. See here. Now, what this particular statement is all about it. As a researcher, uh, when you are dealing with a particular problem, as being a qualitative researcher, you are going to construct the knowledge based on what your respondents are going to talk about it. And you are going to collect the data, maybe one case study, five case studies, or maybe hardly 20 people. Okay? You are going to identify, and you know what the researcher the respondent is telling about it. You know, there is a huge scope for you to understand whether it's correct or not sometimes. Whereas, when it comes to quantitative researchers, you are designing the tool after doing pilot study. You also got approval from various experts, including the terminology that you are using as a part of your research. Take, for instance, I'm collecting data from uh, adversity question among. Uh, higher secondary students. As I'm coming, imagine that I'm coming from psychology background. I'm doing research on this particular adversity question. But I don't know whether my the target group, that students, those are studying eighth standard, are they in a position to understand the terminology that I'm using or not? So I'll check with various experts the kind of terminologies I'm using on it, and not only terminology point of view. I also look at is there any bias, whether whether I'm putting as a researcher what my assumptions on this particular research. Our respective study already got approval from my supervisor, other uh, resource faculty members who are experts in this particular area. As a researcher, I should not go with go to the field with bias. Okay, why uh, quantitative researchers are going to field with, uh, with proper lot of confidence because they are testing it, they are doing pilot study. Whether you are as a researcher, you are going to do it, or you are going to appoint someone who is going to collect the data, result will be the same. Objective will be right. When it comes to qualitative research. The researcher influences the data collection. Your bias should not come to the field. There is a concept called bracketing. The person, those are using phenomenological approach. While going to research, your assumption should not influence your data collection process. 
if your assumptions influence, take for instance, if I'm going to collect data about a particular community. Instead of asking second question, I'll assume myself, okay, this is what is going to be there for this particular group of people. Maybe looking at the first answer to the first question, I assume myself. So that should not be there. Uh, that can happen in quality research, but whereas when it comes to uh, quantitative research, it won't happen. Because it already tested it. Okay. Is it clear with this? Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, we have discussed, uh, I guess we have gone through different, what are the characteristics of different quality to research and quantity to research. Each quantity to research, each methodology has its own uh, strengths and weaknesses. Take for instance, we talk about quality to research, it gives more uh, rich description. It gives uh, in-depth knowledge, okay? But that is not going to happen with quantity to research. Quantity research talks about particular variables, okay? Maybe particular content, uh, one or two variables, it may be going to be experimental based, okay? Maybe you're going to look at association between two different terms, okay? Or relation between two different terms. So whatever the strengths we hang in qualitative research, they are minus for the quantitative research. What are the plus we hang with qualitative research, they are plus for the, I mean, so as a researcher, if I be feeling that, but just by using one method is not sufficient for me, to achieve my research objectives. So in that case, I'm going to use mixing methods. Mixing methods is a combination of both quantitative and qualitative. It's not just collecting data, it's all about analyzing data as well, you know. Mixing everywhere. You're going to integrate your both quantitative and qualitative data, not only at the time of data collection, you only at the time of interpreting the results as well. You're going to do that, okay. Now, why we need to do it? If you talk about philosophical point of view, there is a lot of dis uh, discussions are going on. Objective research is more uh, reliable research because we hang reliability, validity, we hang huge sample, we hang representation of people from different uh, categories. So whatever results I'm going to come up with, it is valid. My results are reliable. Whereas when it comes to qualitative research, just you're collecting data from one or two persons and you're going trying to tell that this is my research is all about it. No? Now, in that case, what I, as a researcher, I'm going to use both quantitative and qualitative research because mixing method researchers, they are not worried about any philosophical background, philosophical stand, okay? The main objective is to solve the problem. The main objective is to understand the particular phenomena in more detail, okay? If you look at what are the purpose, take for instance, there are so many terminologies we use it like multi-method, mixing method, mono-method. Mono-method means we know, right? Whether it's quantitative or qualitative, you're going to use only one method. Multi-mode, what is multi-mode method? Multi-mode method, as a part of my research, I'm using one is survey, which is going to be quantitative. Second one, I'm using observation checklist. Take for instance, I just want to visit nearby Anganwadi centers. I want to look at it, the kind of infrastructures they are providing as a part of Anganwadi schools nearby Gandhi Nagar district, okay? One uh, district nearby, near to capital, another district, uh, some corner of the particular state. I want to see how authorities are pre giving preferences when it comes to uh, looking at their infrastructure. So at the initial stage, I collect the data by using survey method from all the school teachers and administrators. Secondly, I'll also go with the checklist, observation checklist. Observation method can be used for both quantitative as well as qualitative. If you're going with observation checklist, Anganwadi centers, uh, there is a particular procedure they need to follow it. What are the basic infrastructure supposed to be there in Anganwadi schools and co schools, okay? If you're using quantitative survey, I mean, what are the quantitative tools you are going to use? More than one method, there is multi-mode method. Whereas if you're going to use, one is qualitative, second one is quantitative, that is called mixed method, okay? And multi-mode method, we don't need to discuss much because everybody knows this, it is a quantitative, we are going to use only one particular paradigm, we are going to be completely objective-based question, okay? It is going to be completely numbers, based on numbers. But major problems comes with when you're using, when you're trying to integrate both quantitative and qualitative research. We should consider certain parameters while designing your research design, that is especially when you are planning to combine both quantitative and qualitative, 
certain parameters you should consider, right? Now, I hope this point is very clear. Now, in one of the situations, we'll do mixing methods. Why we need to conduct quantitative research? I said, wherever there is plus, we're having plus for qualitative, we're also having plus for quantitative. We are trying to combine it. But what are the other specific reasons behind it? There are a number of reasons. I can discuss four important uh, reasons for using uh, mixing method research. First one is triangling, triangulation. Triangulation, where we are triangulation, take for instance, I did research on denotable tribals, okay? In this case, I already collected data by using quantitative research from around 200 people. We have collected data from 200 people in denotable tribals. Now, I want to verify the findings. I want to check the validity and reliability of these particular findings, okay? In order to check the findings, validity and reliability, I'm going to use qualitative research, I'm just going to check it, whether are there any differences, is there any reliability, validity issues when it comes to uh, looking at the prop findings of my research, okay? So this is called triangulation. Basically triangulation, we are going to use to check your findings, okay? Second one, complementary. <clears throat> Again, I'm using the same topic so that context is already clear with us. Complementary. Now, I collected data from denotable tribals, their health seeking behavior. I have mentioned that I have taken two different variables. One is occupation patterns, second one is health seeking impact. Now, when I talk about quantitative, I'll talk about what are the occupations they are carrying it, what kind of treatment they are taking it, how many times they are visiting it, how frequently they are visiting it, up to what, what extent they are having access to nearby government uh, hospitals. So everything in number, I'm going to talk about it. But in addition to quantitative research, I want to understand their experiences. The person, there's no change in his occupation patterns, still he's doing robberies, or still he's uh, working a very uh, minimal, where he's getting a very minimal amount of uh, wages per day. And what kind of health seeking behavior is hanging it? What kind of coping uh, strategies is there hanging it? So the qualitative findings help me to explain the quantitative findings. Because in quantitative, we are going to tell X, Y, uh, satisfied, not satisfied. Maybe if you're doing the uh, advanced level, you're going to use Likert scale, you're going to use regression, correlation, you're going to do that. But it won't give much background how the person is experiencing this particular phenomena. The person who is having good standard of living, what is health seeking behavior, whenever there is an issue with his family, how they're able to manage other expenses, you know. So this particular rich description gives me more uh, understanding. So that's where I use uh, qualitative as a complementary. In addition to whatever quantitative knowledge is going to contribute, I'm trying to look at what else I can add it further, you know, to understand this particular problem. So that I can report to the government, maybe I can report to the particular state government, okay, I can inform particular nearby NGOs what kind of work they can do it in order to uh, make them to access to proper health care. Irrespective of their having good economic background or not, are there any changes in uh, the occupation patterns or not, okay. So I can able to come, I can able to bring some kind of solution to that, okay. It can be action oriented research, I can able to do that. <clears throat> Next one, I hope, is it clear, difference between triangulation and complementary? Triangulation, basically we're talking about verifying your findings. Validity and reliability of your findings, you are going to check it. Complementary, in addition to your quantitative findings, you are trying to add to support your findings, to support your quantitative findings. As the name itself self, self, suggesting, complementary. You are doing some complementary to your findings. You are going to add it. Okay. Expansion. <clears throat> uh, I collected data from denotable tribals. Okay. Then, in addition to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect data from nearby uh, local health, uh, hospitals, primary healthcare centers. Okay. Maybe I'm going to collect data from nearby NGOs. So I'm going to look at it from different angles. I'm going to add same phenomena, but different stakeholders I'm having it. For collecting data from quantitative, uh, uh, reverse for tribals, I use qualitative. Okay, I collected data from five different case studies, five different uh, economic backgrounds. Based on the findings, I'm going to collect data from what kind of government schemes were hanging with, with regard to reverse for tribals. Okay, how far they're able to use it. So I'm trying to expand my research, my different 
in the particular same phenomena, I'm going to expand looking at different dimensions point of view. That's why I'm going to expand my research. This one. Last one, development. Take for instance, when you are going to do research, something which is new or something which is not explored further. Take for instance, we want to do research on online classes. Due to COVID situation, all the educational institutions right now, they are teaching online classes. But today we are in this particular platform because of COVID-19. And everything got affected. And if you look at the UGC, UGC is saying that at least minimum 25% of the classes has to be taken online and remaining 75% face to face when the situation becomes normal. Right? Now, this is come later on. But this is something new. We all know those of people who have done research, uh, distance courses, they might have some kind of experience with online classes. The people, those who did uh, distance courses, they have some kind of experience about it. But first time I'm talking about online classes. There is no particular research in this particular domain. Now, if you want to do research on this particular topic, like learning and teaching experience, uh, teachers' perceptions on teaching and learning during COVID-19 period. Okay. Now, I don't have much research. I don't have much research studies. I try to explore. There are no articles in this area. What I'm going to do is there are a number of ways to do research. One is I'll try to interact with a couple of uh, students. Those are coming from medical background, those are coming from uh, engineering background, those are coming from social science background. Each person is having different kind of experience about it. Okay. So I'll try to explore what is this particular problem, just collecting data from four people. After getting some patterns, after getting some patterns about how these particular people are experiencing in terms of uh, teaching, in terms of research, in terms of uh, what kind of, how faculties are making content very attractive or how they are take, taking classes very engaged, you know. Uh, what about assessment pattern? So there are a number of variables which I'll come to know once we interact with different faculty. Each department sign different way of handling the course. Each course requires different patterns of handling courses, right? So looking at four or five cases, I'll try to understand the problem in detail. Then based on my findings of qualitative study, I'll prepare the tool, I'll prepare the liquid scale, I'll prepare standardize some tool. Then I'm going to collect the data from the entire state or entire India, or maybe particular discipline all over India, like medical background. So your first phase of research will help you to develop second phase of your research. This is called about, uh, this, is a, this is another purpose where you can use uh, mixed methods research. I hope this point is clear. Anyone would like to add uh, any questions with regard to this point? Triangulation, complementary, expansion, and development. Now, there are so many types of mixing method designs. We have scholars like Criswell. There are a number of scholars who defined uh, different types of designs. You'll find sequential designs, concurrent designs, integrated designs. Within sequential, you have three types of designs, like explanatory, sequential design, exploratory sequence. So designs, minimum eight to 10 types of designs are there. How we are going to decide each design is good for you. So it's all about the kind of, what is the purpose of your research? What kind of questions you want to study it? That will decide what kind of methodology you need to use it? What kind of research design you have to use it? Now take for instance, I'm going to cover a couple of uh, research designs, we are going to cover it. Sequential means the methods occur one after the other. Qualitative, then quantitative. Either it can be qualitative starts, or it can be started with quantitative first. Choice is yours, but if you're going to start with the qualitative, then quantitative, that is called exploratory sequential design, means at initial stage, you are going to explore particular phenomena which was not uh, explored, or uh, something which is new or which is not explored much, you want to develop it. Then once you get the idea, then you are going to collect the data by using at a larger level, by using quantitative research. Similarly, you can start with quantitative first, then you can also do it qualitative next. So these are, these are the two different types of research uh, designs you can frame it. 
Next one, concurrent. Qualitative and quantitative method studies conducted in wrong side one another means you are trying to conduct the study simultaneously in a single period of time. Whereas sequential designs, first you will complete one research, then you will start with the second research. Let me take uh, give you some examples here. I will take one of the example, explanatory sequential mixing methods. I just want to know one of your research topic, anyone? Asmita, what is your research topic? Uh, my topic is uh, 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 legal preparedness for public health emergency in India, a comparative analysis. So how are you planning to do that? Uh, uh, so uh, my plan is to first analyze the current legal framework, which is there in India to see the gaps to and basically I have pointed out certain problems like multiplicity of laws, like inadequacy of laws, like the laws being very old. And also I have analyzed Constitution of India in the context of public health emergency. I have analyzed federalism and I have also analyzed the emergency provisions. So for this, I am planning to do a comparative analysis with, uh, uh, with a few countries which uh, who have, you know, Time and again, they have responded uh, to these kind of emergencies, unlike India. Uh, in India, we tried to have certain bills and you know certain amendments, but they could not pass through. But other countries, they have timely reacted to such emergencies. So I would try to do a comparative analysis of how they, how far they have gone, and what we can learn from them. Also, I would uh, analyze if the federalism principle, which is which is in a way challenged in such situations. How can we find a solution to it? I have analyzed, I will be analyzing different lists under Schedule 7 and would try to see whether a state should take precedence or whether the center, basically I'll propose a cooperative uh, federalism, so that is how I will go about it. And then analyze the emergency provisions as well. Okay, uh, I'm not able to apply here. Uh, what I'll just uh, give my own examples from here. I just brought one methodology. Yes, sir, please. Sir. I'll just intervene. Please, sir. Just a follow-up question to Ashmita. Yes, sir. Uh, would you not want to go to the uh, hospitals and people to yes, sir. discuss these okay. issues? Call it. Yes, sir. I I am preparing the questionnaire for the for today's uh, uh, assignment. I am planning okay. for the questionnaire. Okay. So first is you will uh, do an analysis of the law. Uh, in India, uh, in the context of the acts like Epidemics Act and the Constitution of India, and then also compare it with other countries. So, what is this research called? This is qualitative, sir. Qualitative research. Okay, yes. and then uh, then you will also want to see what is actually happening on the ground, right? Yes, sir. So, for that, you will go to the hospital and. Uh, meet a number of patients, doctors, to see whether, uh, you know, whether these laws are in any way helping to control epidemic or anything like that? Yes, sir. and also go to the authorities, to the municipal corporations, to uh, the administrative authorities, to NGOs. Okay, okay. So, uh, which means you will also collect the data, uh, you know, quantitatively as well, right? Yes, sir. That I have to figure out right now. Uh, uh, I'm okay. I'm in the process of framing the question. Okay, okay. So then your reverse is a mixed method, right? Yes, sir. It is mixed. Mm. So that is what uh, Professor Rao wanted to know. Okay, sir. I don't know how he picked you. Maybe there must be some. Hmm? <laughs> Maybe because <laughs> I just started <laughs> the question. <laughs> <laughs> one of the actors right. today. One of the actors like, today. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good, 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 Ashmita. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. For your contribution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, see, your research purpose plays an important role when it comes to designing your research. Or, or uh, maybe, uh, Dr. Rao, I think in connection with what Ashmita said, if I can also, you know, um, give one example. Please, sir. Please, sir. Uh, and then maybe we can come to the theoretical aspects. Yes, yes, yes. So can I take next 15-20 minutes? Please, sir, please. Yes. Right. Okay. 
So good evening, uh, friends. Um, it's nice to meet all of you after a long time. See, um, I, I'm just uh, now. It's five fifty. Yeah. So I'm going to take another fifteen minutes or so. Uh, initially, I'll be telling you a brief story, and then I will be taking you through a law to be applied in that context. and then uh, i will ask you for your advice on what kind of method that i need to follow if i need to do a research on this problem that what i am going to tell you so this is what so next 15 minutes what i am going to do is going to narrate a story what it's not a, it's not an imaginary story it's a real life uh, story which has happened right in my home state called tamil nadu and then i will also take you through the law and see that uh, how whether the law uh, could help the parties in resolving their problem or not and then as an academic i i want to do a research on it so i need your advice you you guys have been trained uh, so well uh, with so many solvers talking to you about different methods of uh, doing research so i would want some of you to advise me on what method that i should follow okay so this is what is uh, going to be the sequence of uh, me talking to you for the next uh, say 15 to 20 minutes i'll not take more than that the problem is yeah uh, in fact i'll start with the story i told you the story is so you must have uh, a long time back you must have read about uh, a sandalwood smuggler called virappan in tamil nadu a very 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 uh, notorious uh, um, uh, criminal alleged criminal uh, the entire state government wanted to nab him and uh, there was a special task force constituted to nab him from the jungle where he was hiding and carrying on this uh, trade in sandalwood which is prohibited mm -hmm. now this stf they could not find virappan uh, because uh, it's very difficult for the policemen you know the constables and inspectors and uh, esps and igs to get into the jungle because jungle is a very difficult geographical zone policemen cannot enter it so as easily as and uh, he can they cannot navigate the jungle as easily na virappan can navigate right so therefore they were uh, facing setback in catching him but because of political pressure they had to do something so what happened is they started uh, uh, you know harassing threatening the villagers living in the uh, the the forest the tribals uh, the tribal population they were harassing them because they they were under the presumption that uh, these tribals uh, were aware of the movement of uh, virappan they know in jungle how to go and where to find him and in fact they also had this belief that these were the people who are providing him uh, all the means and resources for survival like a groceries water and you know firewood kerosene all these things so therefore uh, they started harassing this uh, innocent villagers now uh, the it went to a particular stage that uh, this uh, uh, they have an association called the tamil nadu uh, tribal welfare association right i'm just literally i'm just try, trying to translate it in english otherwise in tamil it is called as tamil nadu palangudiyanar sangam right so which is which broadly translates to tamil nadu tribal welfare tribal welfare association now these guys wanted you know they 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 felt that it is violation of human rights uh, by the police and therefore they uh, went to the um uh, the, the district human rights court right you all know that uh, under the protection of human rights act uh, three levels of institutions were created one is at the national you have the national human rights commission at the state level you have the state human rights commission and at the district level you have the district human rights courts in fact section 30 of the act uh, can can you just uh, all of you maybe if you can use your computer phone 
to please look at uh, the protection of human rights act 1993 uh, so that i can take you through those sections which uh, in fact you will like to read uh, so that you will be able to understand better what exactly the problem that i am trying to convey uh, if you look at the uh, i hope all of you have by now opened the act the protection of human rights act 1993 yes yes someone is chatting yes yes so uh, if you look at the preamble to the act let's go from the preamble the preamble says what what is the preamble say why this act was enacted so the uh, parliament enacted this law for the following purpose one is to provide for the constitution of nhrc shrc and constitution of human rights court for what for better protection of human rights so this better protection of human rights we need to underline quote and quote right better protection of human rights so they have constituted and under uh, now i would request you to please go to section 30 section 30 of the act which provides for the constitution of human rights court uh so it says that the state government or is there anyone who can read it out for me so that i can also sir may i read it out who is this sir shubhi trivedi this time okay shubhi uh so sir section 30 of uh, the act says that hmm. for the purpose of providing speedy trial of offenses arising hmm. out of violation of human rights hmm. the state government may hmm. with the concurrence of the chief justice of the high court by notification Hmm. specify for each district a court of hmm. session to hmm. be a human rights court to try hmm. the said offences okay wonderful by date yeah i think that is sufficient yeah so the first the, the section starts with for the purpose of providing speedy trial right is that should be speedy trial is there yes sir yes sir yes sir speedy, speedy trial, trial of what kind of offences uh, offences arising up for the violation of human rights yes speedy trial of offences arising out of violation of human rights this is what is contained in section 30 now uh, you know majority of you are uh, lawyers and uh, you know in fact master of laws so i think let's uh, now have a very interesting uh, uh, discussion the next part of the story this uh, tribal welfare association files a is it a criminal complaint or a civil petition so it should be a criminal complaint it should be a criminal complaint right because it is yes, a session sir. score okay. yes sir it so is a session an score offenses. and again you know it talks about speedy trial of offenses yes, yes. so therefore he they, they file a criminal complaint against the uh, the police officers and other people so there were some three four respondents and asked the sessions judge uh, to take cognizance of this offence and uh, uh, deal with them as per the law right is there anything wrong this guys did anyone sir so uh, the... as per uh, sir as per the facts at hand and the interpretation of the law there is nothing wrong that they did because yes. the law itself talks about taking the jurisdiction of the said sessions court correct correct so they went to their local district court right in a district called mator in tamil nadu so they go to the uh, uh, the sessions court which has been designated by the state government as a human rights court under section 30 so there is a gazette notification notifying that this court in mayur will be designated as human rights court under the protection of human rights act so they go to that judge file a complaint stating that uh, your honor uh, the police officers by these these this conduct have violated our human rights therefore you need to punish them so this is their prayer okay now the judge is in trouble the judge the sessions judge who was who, who received this application 
immediately he got shocked and he just threw that application away by asking the petitioners to explain you know some he put some 10 questions he wrote some 10 questions uh questions are like number 1 See, you, you say that offenses arising out of violation of human rights and as a session judge he is asking what are those offenses, number one. Number two, where are those offenses defined? Number three, what is the punishment that I can give for each of these offenses? Number four, whether this offense is a bailable offense, non-bailable offense. Number five, whether this offense is a compoundable offense or a non-compoundable offense. Right? And uh, number six, whether it is cognizable offense, non-cognizable offense. Number seven, whether these offenses to be tried as per chapter 18 of the CRPC. Number 8 or whether it should be tried as per the procedure in chapter 19 of CRPC because trials case, summons case, there are different procedure prescribed under the procedure or whether it should be tried as a sessions case under chapter 20 of CRPC. So 10 questions he asked. I think I gave you all the 10 questions. Alright. Now the district judge doesn't know whether this is a uh, bailable offense or a non-bailable offense, whether it is a cognizable or a non-cognizable, whether it is a compoundable or non-compoundable, what procedure I should follow, what punishment I will give, what is this offense, where is it defined, where is the punishment prescribed in which law. But the court is there, law is there and poor tribals they are expecting justice from this court. Now, uh, this, uh, when uh, this uh, session judge uh, wrote this, uh, these things, uh, then, uh, uh, in fact, um, they, uh, so for some, they, they, through some NGO, they got uh, connected. They did not know what to do, and uh, all the local lawyers in that particular district could not answer this question. Uh, is, it, is it, can you appreciate this? What the what the session judge did was right or wrong? Sir, I think. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yes, yes. Alukit Srivastava. Uh, sir, I think uh, looking uh, looking at the fact that criminal law is supposed to be very objective in nature. Yes. All the offenses are supposed to be defined. I think. Yes. Uh, I think the uh, the session judge did correct hmm. by. Uh, basically, raising out as the uh, raising out a query as, as to how do you define human rights? Where do I get correct. correct, 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 right? So the the tribal association were also right. So they were also right in approaching the court because this act, this section provided that. Yes. Sir. And the session judge is also right yes. because uh, he don't know how to deal with this because where are these offenses defined? You know, for example. If I go to the Human Rights Court, say in Gandhinagar, and and tell the judge that my right to equality is violated, now punish them under the Protection of Human Rights Act. So what punishment he will give? Which law prescribes punishment for breach of equality? Now all of you are law students. How many of you have confronted with this kind of a problem? So there is no law as such, as per my knowledge, that uh, provides punishment for uh, violation of right to equality. Then so what is that this? Is a very what? constitutional aspect involved in it. No, no. What about this session court speaker? <laughs> offenses arising out of violation of human rights. Sir, uh, I guess sir. that if we are taking, uh, if I may, sir. Yes, please, Jaydeep. Uh, yeah, sir, uh, I believe that if we start taking restrictive interpretation as to the offenses mm -hmm. of human rights, mm -hmm. then no purpose would be served 
uh, with regard to law which are there, for example, Indian Penal Code or Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act or any other criminal law. When we are talking about right to equality being not being punishable, mm. so the idea of right to equality, uh, mm. that idea is everywhere. So like when we are talking about criminal law, the see human right the purpose of human right is that any law which was there which is there or which is to be made the, all the laws need to be in consonance with human rights and that in itself includes the criminal law as well so when we are no, talking no, about no, you know, uh, JP, i understand your point i would have also told the same thing but you know unfortunately sure. they are not here uh, the, this problem is of the session judge he can't say all these things you know he will have to deal with that case he will have to, you know, he should charge it. And he will have to try this offense. Under what sir, or provision of CRP, he will try it. But sir, that offense, like the section itself says that that, that particular court has the power of a session court. So, yes. the, so the, the derivation of the power is from the session court. So, I believe that when we are talking so about... Is it, okay, I, is it okay that a session court tries a, a matter which has to be tried by a magistrate? A summons case, for example, which is uh, not a session's case. Well, now, sir, uh, the uh, session court will be, whether the session court can follow the procedure under Chapter 18 of CRPC. Uh, well, sir, uh, if if the case is such, for example, when we are talking about Section 323 of CRPC, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain cases in which the magistrate. See, sir, when we are talking about Section 209, there is a compulsory committal. But when we are talking about Section 200 and 323, the magistrate in certain cases has the power or has the discretion to give the case which is tribal by the magistrate itself to the hmm. court of session if the case is of that nature. No, so in, in this situation, now tell me, this guy had yes, given sir. something to the session's court. Yes, sir, yes. So, sir, these cases like which I could... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, am, am I audible? Yes, yes, Jadeep. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, in these cases, the kind of offenses which we can make out is like assault or criminal force or might be grievous or a simple hurt. So, there are certain offenses which, like these offenses can be tried by this particular judge or at least a committal can be made to the court of session. Because if the judge starts saying that what are the offenses which are to be made out of this particular complaint of yours, then mm. in that particular case, sir, the whole purpose of uh, forming a human rights code would be defeated. Yeah, that's what exactly is being done now. Today, tell me how many human rights courts has cases? Uh, and why there are no because, cases? Because, sir, like in most of the cases, as the proviso of this particular section in itself says that okay. the cases where there is a session court, mm -hmm. uh, then there is no need to make any special court like a human rights court because the session so court you have to designate a session court. court. Okay, that is procedural. That is as far as the state government is concerned. My question yes, is, yes, how a judge is going sir, to... If may I add something, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. This is so on, sir. Sir, can we look it into a different perspective altogether? Uh, by saying this, I mean that what about this arbitrary arrest or detention? We can start from there, this this point. There, there was no then arbitrary there arrest. There will be something which can look. There is no arbitrary. See, these policemen going to that village, they have not arrested anyone. They simply go invade the privacy of people, sit in their home. Uh, to ensure that whether they are having any conversation with uh, Virapan or not. They, you know, uh, stop these people, the women, when they are going to the forest for getting some firewood, they, these guys are going inside. So, uh, assume that the, the, complaint so it is, will come under the, the, the complaint is invasion of privacy. They are going and sitting in each of the tribal's homes. Now, what happens and what punishment? So, which so in, talks about in this case, it can come. This case it can come under the constitutional right of fundamental right of privacy of okay, the home. Or, case, no, I am talking about a like Forget about High Court, Supreme Court. That everybody knows. I am talking about the remedy when 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 there is a law creating a remedy and designating a court without telling what exactly the court has to do. Is it not a real problem? Now I will continue with the story. Now what happens to this gentleman? 
uh, in fact you know this is somebody advises them to write to justice krishna here because he stays nearby so justice krishna here was alive at that particular point of time so they wrote to justice krishna here justice krishna here hope all of you know we are krishna here and uh, his uh, contribution towards human rights jurisprudence and he was very active in that region of tamil nadu very very frequently uh, talking to lawyers judges the addressing people everything post retirement from the supreme court now uh, justice krishna here receives this and he is there writing the letter to justice your lordship you know this is what a session judge is telling when we go to him for justice you please tell what should we do and justice krishna here found these questions very genuine and he feels that this is not the way a law should operate so what he did he wrote a letter along with this complaint he writes his own forwarding letter and he forwarded this complaint to the chief justice of the madras high court and asking the madras high court to, to constitute a bench to decide on these 10 questions raised by the sessions judge right now what happened after that i am not going to tell you now because at that particular point of time i was working very closely with the justice krishna here he called me and he said hey, professor why don't you do an academic research on this this is very very interesting that we have a law but providing remedy but unfortunately people cannot uh, uh, invoke or uh, you know seek justice under this law because this law is so badly drafted so he asked me to do uh, a, a research and then you know like with the help of my uh, some of my students uh, i did some research now what what should i do how do i do an academic research which method i should follow how should i proceed so this is what i want your advice on uh, sir if may i question who is this sir shubhi this way no shubhi i want to answer from somebody else all right you are, okay. you are talking too much <laughs> my bad sir i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> no 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 shubhi no, no, just in light of rain you know yeah if nobody is else is prepared then i would want to call you again but i would want to give more opportunity for my other colleagues so sir uh, if may i who is this no so Hello? your turn is over soham sir soham soham jaydeep so, down over okay okay sir over. can i come in sir who is this nadim khan yes um sir uh, one thing as an academic uh, one can uh, engage in do uh, mm. that we should uh, mm. have a, a kind of uh, report or something like that which describes offenses which involves various human rights violations mm. like criminal offenses uh, in, uh, not just ipc but in special laws also mm. in case of atrocity laws also Uh, because mm. there is a caste there is a atrocity against uh, say tribal community then mm. the, even the police officer can be booked under the law and the mm. special human right court has jurisdiction to try these cases okay. so um, okay. so the the case can go at both places either at the human right court or maybe the special court under the prevention of atrocity act so that as in 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 being an being in an academic institution one thing so see, those are alternative kind of schedule where we can tell see as i i could have told them you know why are you going to this uh, uh, human rights court directly file a writ under article 226 in the madras high court me immediately you could have got an order see we are not talking about the remedy what they should which court they should go and all i am just my problem is as a legal researcher now i am looking at this law and you know when in fact justice krishna here called me and when he narrated this entire story to me and he gave me a copy of this forwarding letter and then you know and uh, interestingly i'll tell you i have been teaching this law for so many years and i have never noticed this gap that this uh, section you know this one particular uh, thing called offenses arising out of violation of human rights are offenses arising out of violation of human rights 
then sitting at uh, justice krishnayar's house i uh, was reading this section and then i asked him uh, we we were discussing uh, you know casually that you know what is this human rights first of all offenses arising out of violation of human rights let's look at what human rights means and then we will find out what rights are violated here so we wanted to go in that direction so i looked into section 21d of the protection of human rights act which provides for a definition right and definition what is the dictionary meaning of the word definition can you just someone check what is the meaning of definition so i think i am taking more time anyone dictionary meaning of the word definition what a definition so is supposed to do so definition is what is meant by a word text hmm. concept or action okay so you will have to say you know explain the word you know in a very simple form so that uh, people understand right yes. now uh, i would request all of you to please look into section 21d of the protection of human rights act right section 21d of the uh, uh, protection of human rights act so you could see the definition of human rights there and please re- look into the definition of human rights given there human rights means the rights please you know quote and quote you know see the word relating to rights relating to life say if you say right to life i understand what are the rights relating to life what are the rights relating to liberty what are the rights relating to equality and what are the rights relating to dignity i could not uh, understand i could not understand this definition you know so you need to be a constitutional law expert to know the meaning of human rights because you need to know what are the rights relating to life rights relating to dignity now come to the interesting point you know after that the definition doesn't end with this the definition says guaranteed by the constitution so i i want to say that this right what is a human right no no uh, the, before the district court i will have to say this is an offense arising out of violation of this right relating to dignity and again i will have to tell the court that this is guaranteed by the constitution so if something is not guaranteed by the constitution then it is not a human right and second part is if it is not guaranteed by the constitution or embodied in the international covenants right and again you know you need to know you need to be a master of international law to understand when something embodied in international covenant and enforceable by courts in india right if if you know again you know krishnaya's judgment on in jali judge orgis case when uh, the petitioner relied on uh, icpr which is an international covenant again defined in 21f of the same act there justice krishna the supreme court said that this is not enforceable in india because it is not ex of facto uh, part of corpus juris of india right and again embodied in the international covenants and enforceable by courts in india again you know see the you, again i need to know what are those international covenants look at 21f 21f will give you the definition of international covenants it says icpr icsr and other international covenants and believe me i swear i promise i wanted to know as a teacher of human rights law what are those other covenants international covenants notified by the government to be included under 21f i wrote to nhrc with all my contacts i approached here and there finally could not get anything then ultimately i had to file an rki application 
which application also was written three times for technical reasons that you are uh, this uh, what is that you are, we will not accept your check send us the postal order those kind of reasons it was returned three times after returning finally after nine months they gave me a, 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 a an answer stating that crc and sida are the two other accounts which were further notified later by the central government which was not in the act so this is the state right now i will have to find offenses which are uh, you know uh, offenses arising out of violation of human rights when i am not sure what is my human rights tell me whether this definition how many of us will be able to tell me like i right now i, I will conduct a test give me five rights relating to dignity please write it on the chat box whoever writes five i will give you 500 rupees right now anyone willing to take 500 rupees i want five rights relating to dignity and whether dignity is guaranteed in the constitution in part 3 anywhere i know life is guaranteed liberty is guaranteed equality is guaranteed dignity is the uh, child of the supreme court yes not sir. the constitution and the article 21 it is enshrined and now right to life means right to live with dignity yes 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 so now when i started you know writing the meaning of this definition when i started you know exploring this definition and then when i started writing it by the time i uh, finished explaining this definition it was almost around uh, 300 pages right then i i went to the same uh, agency you know which was helping this uh, uh, tribal association to take this matter further and uh, they in fact uh, you know published this book and this book of mine which gives merely uh, content to this definition section 2 and the nothing else it's not a textbook it's not a you know research work i have just expanded the meaning of or, or i have just added content to section 2 and d it is a 200 plus page book right uh, it it finds a place in the un office today un library because it was funded by them uh, and uh, uh, today there are 10 uh, yeah, it it is now available in india in 10 different languages right so a small thing you know it it, it became a big project and i lot of other things also we did with this definition we went to the district law the court lawyers who are practicing in this human rights courts and asked them if given them a questionnaire and asked them to write what what do you mean by uh, do you understand the meaning of rights relating to dignity yes or no if yes name five you can understand you know district court may what what kind of response we got almost you know 97.8% of them told that we don't know what is this these are the lawyers we have in district courts in india who are practicing before this human rights courts so now what kind of method that i need to uh, use to prove the point that this definition is uh, is something very defective so the uh, act need to be amended to come out with a very simple and comprehensive legislation because you you if you see you know do a comparative study no government no country attempted to even define human rights human rights uh, there was no uh, absolute definition of they will only give an inclusive definition human rights means this 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 that's all you don't put too many conditions like guaranteed by the constitution embodied in international covenant enforceable by courts in india it's very difficult how many lawyers in the supreme court will know what are the conditions under which an environment uh, and uh, an international covenant can be enforced by the courts in india 
right? So how do I do a, a research here? Whether I should go meet the lawyers, try and find out uh, to prove the point that this definition is very difficult, or uh, how do I do this? Or I simply do a quantitative, a qualitative work, uh, reviewing judgments and say that in this court, the Supreme Court said this is a fundamental right. In this court, the Supreme Court said that this is a right to dignity. In this uh, court, the uh, Supreme Court said that this is this amounts to right to dignity. So I have a lot of literature in the form of judgments available before me, thousands of them, from which I read pick up those uh, rights which has been recognized by uh, the Supreme Court as rights relating to dignity. So I will have to do a lot of quantitative work and to prove my point I will have to do some qualitative work going to the lawyers to find out to prove that there is an actual research problem. I need to go to the lawyers first, do a survey, you know, conduct a, uh, at least meet some 500,000 of them. And ask them, you know, what do you mean by this definition? What could you understand? Right? So if you find that, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting. The statistics, maybe sometime later, uh, I will share those uh, uh, data with all of you. So this is how, uh, you know, situations will come that you will have to apply both the method. First, you go to the lawyer and then, you know, search the judgments to find out. Our first, you know, search it from the judgments by doing a qualitative research and then go to the uh, field to see whether uh, the lawyers actually know these judgments, whether they know that these are the rights uh, which, to, which are to be called as human rights for the purpose of Section 2.1.D. And in spite of that, whether they will get justice under Section 30 or not, it's a different story. So my research originally I thought of doing under section 30, it got deviated to section 2.1.D and uh, it uh, went uh, differently, right? So uh, finally, ultimately I could uh, get a book out of this work uh, which I could publish and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's now, you know, many human rights defenders use this as a handbook and as a manual for all their training programs. So that way I'm happy that my research has ended up uh, with some concrete product which is now available for uh, civil society uh, for uh, uh, use in their training programs. But then, you know, these are circumstances, you know, circumstances which actually we need to encounter where one method of doing research, for example, <clears throat> simply looking at the judgments, you know, how will I convince people that why I am doing is relevant, why I am doing, you know, to uh, prepare a list of rights which can be called as rights relating to dignity, why it is important. So you will have to actually go to the uh, people, uh, uh, the lawyers and find out whether actually they can understand anything out of this meaning uh, from this definition and then you know prove it with the help of the quant qualitative work that we do. So these are something I think I have taken more time and uh, I would now uh, want you guys to think over these kind of issues and see that uh, how best you can do it and other things. Then is there any scope for giving some assignment on this? If they can come out with... Uh... Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. We can think of so. Okay. Okay. Right. I think already they are tired of too many assignments. Eh? Right. Okay, so over to Professor Rao for discussing it. So I thought I will just bring in some live examples where they can use both these methods and where they will have to actually mix yes, the right. methods. And, it, and again, you know, it's not a fixed route, one qual or qual con. What route you need to follow, it all depends on the problem that you face. And that's what uh, when he was talking about sir, sir, whether it's be explanatory or exploratory, I thought I will bring in the story to explain to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir, before you leave, sir, may I, sir? Yes, Soham. Sir, actually, whatever you said with respect to your story and the way you have researched, sir, 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 we can go ahead with uh, first analyzing or looking at the best practices followed in the world 
then we can go ahead with the courts different different courts those who have come up with any type of uh, understanding with respect to human rights and we start like this in this type of situation that you have the situation because uh, the, the way you got this particular problem to solve you were not having anything at hand so what i was thinking Correct. that in this situation we can uh, go ahead with the best practices which are being followed throughout the world then we can go and try to look deeper in our present system present legal system by looking at different different cases mm-hmm. in this don't not really uh, you know raise this particular issue but they had uh, some way to try to find out the, uh, the definition of something like that with uh, with respect to that so 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 sir this is the correct way for starting yeah, in fact no in fact that is how i i started doing it when i uh, when i was asked to do this work uh, in fact this was not a funded research i like to i had to do it on my own but then you know after this product came when a book came out of it i earned a good amount of money. in fact for each uh, now also when they revise it they give me money even without i don't know whether they are actually doing it or not but uh, just by getting a check i know get to know okay these guys are now coming out with a new edition that's why they are giving me money so that you see uh, uh, you were right so from first is i i just started looking around uh, finding out how other countries did and interestingly no one including the united nations did that they did not want to you know uh, using again krishnaya's language they doesn't want to cabin or crib or confine uh, this definition of human rights in certain doctrinal limits right so they wanted to keep it say you see that's what the un also did when they came out they came out with an enumerative list of rights and say that these are human rights they did not try to put it in two sentences when you when you try and put this human rights it's a very sensitive word and if you try and confine it within two sentences it will never satisfy anyone and there is going to be a problem so first is what i did i went for a quantitative data because i need to uh, tell justice krishna here that uh, sir actually i went to the lawyers and none of them were able to give me uh, this uh, meaning of uh, the definition of human rights so that i thought i will ask him and use his office to write to the appropriate agency for amendment in this but unfortunately uh, before this could happen he passed away right so uh, first is we, we did a study in many district courts and you know tried and uh, you know we came out with a questionnaire Uh, with the different parts part one rights relating to life can you understand the meaning of rights relating to life if yes give name some right similarly rights relating to liberty uh, yes or no if yes give the names of few rights which you say is rights relating to liberty right and then you know then part three rights relating to equality part four rights relating to dignity and then after that part five whether the above rights are guaranteed by the constitution if yes under what provision of the constitution number of part 6 in the questionnaire it says if this uh, uh, if it is not in the constitution is it embodied in any international covenant if yes which covenant and whether that covenant is notified or it will fall within the definition of section 2f of the protection of human rights act right so when we put all these things the even someone you know who said uh, um, that i know what what do i mean by right to life even that guy when he said do you know when this right uh, right to life which is embodied in an international covenant and under what circumstances this international covenant can be enforceable by courts in india they were not aware of the circumstances because these are guys not you know uh, uh, properly trained in international law where you discuss about the relationship between international municipal law under what circumstances indian courts take cognizance of international treaties all these things you know not taught in most of the law schools in this country uh, or at least you know not that clear so in that cases especially the lawyers practicing in the district court they were completely zero that is the way you know almost 97.4% of them had to say that we don't know i think the remaining 2% of them 
actually when we need to go and talk to them to see whether they actually know or not right so there there are a lot of things yes so then then you know after complete after uh, you know uh, completing this uh, quantitative research i came to a conclusion that yes this area needs research and then you know i went for a quantitative method to see what exactly are those rights relating to life so i wrote one chapter on it rights relating to dignity chapter number 3 uh, uh, rights relating to equality chapter number 4 rights relating to liberty chapter number 5 so with introduction and uh, you know suggestions so then i made six chapters it's almost like a thesis right so the, that was the quantitative part so i whenever i uh, start explaining the quantitative part of my research i use this qualitative data to say that why i am writing this chapter for what because these are already these are knowledge in public domain but why do i need to do it i need to give reason by relating it to the qualitative work that i did and i said that these many district lawyers do not know what is this and therefore i thought that i will put together in one particular chapter in the next 10 15 pages what are those rights which you can call as rights relating to liberty or rights relating to equality so this is how i did this entire uh, exercise right so may i ask a question yes sir uh, sir as you had pointed out the two sections which talked about establishment of human rights court and the next section also is about special public prosecutor so can we say that while the legislation was made uh, there uh, the uh, people who were deliberating on the legislation were very clear that certain rights which will be violated will fall within the criminal act but if the discussion was done and human rights court was designated as a session court and a public prosecutor wouldn't have been there a discussion that what kind of offenses might occur and why not discussion was done that where it fell within the ipc if not fell within ipc why not like ndps act and prevention of terrorism act whenever a special act was made why why was definitions why the next chapter did not come up as a definition of human right offenses specifically that is the problem with this legislation this is what we have highlighted in our research and we said that yes. this is a thing so in fact the suggestion is we gave in the suggestions we gave multiple suggestions like either you know we instead of defining human rights like this again you know it will not solve the problem under section 30 for which you will have to come out with a comprehensive list of offenses arising out of violation of these rights so that part of the research is still open Uh, if it is interest you you can uh, take it up for your phd work and i'll be very happy to be your supervisor yes sir i'll give it a thought sir. yes so ask a question right i think we have we have overshot the time sir i think it's really inspiring and it's good that we have this kind of research work i'm sure uh, like this kind of life cases are really important so i think now there is any questions we can answer try any further questions from you can take couple of questions so i think it's time to wind up you know don't encourage them to ask more questions sir i need to go home okay. I, i i badly need a coffee okay, okay. thank you Shobhata madam is not even arranging for coffee for the resource yeah, yeah. persons. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. But meanwhile, I can only say this much to both you and to Rao sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's all. The session is over. We can leave. Yes, sir. Ma'am, there is Abhilash ready with the vote of thanks. Okay. May I request Abhilash? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhilash, and, and on the behalf of entire 20 years, I would like to thank the Samar for the discussion. Definitely, have researchers uh, in further studies. 
uh, first of all uh, dr ambati sir uh, explained all mixed method and the all qualitative and quantitative techniques how we can collaborate in our uh, techniques in research uh, designs and then further he also talked about the creswell's definition that uh, research mixed method research is not only about collection of data but also the analyzing the data how we approach both the methods simultaneously through the purpose of research and sequential methods then after uh, that uh, shanta kumar sir made uh, a beautiful story and identified the gaps which we have in the human rights act he told a story of virappan and how tribal welfare association went to a court and how district judge uh, listed the forwarded letter to all these issues that were there and how uh, uh, honorable supreme ex supreme court judge uh, krishna iyer sir uh, uh, forwarded letter to the uh, all these things which have been uh, not narrated in the human rights act then the sir fi- finally filed the iti and came with content product how these gaps can be well notified and how research can be done in this particular area so thank you so much for a valuable time and valuable uh, knowledge that you gave us that for all this purpose we can also note that how critical analysis of this particular act is important in our research and how we can find a gap on basics of the uh, acts which i have in the in the indian context and the international perspective thank you sir thank you so much thank you abhilash you know in fact you know i'll just take two more minutes to address one ethical issue because uh, initially when uh, uh, dr rao was mentioning about ethics i also had to face one ethical issue in this uh, research of mine relating to this uh, section 21d so as i told you know it was not a funded project so i did not engage professional people i just contacted friends and uh, students mostly practicing in those district courts to collect the questionnaire and send it so one very favorite student he uh, he, he said that uh, he know because i explained it the entire thing and he was with me spending time a lot of time so he understood exactly what uh, this research will culminate in so he what he did you know he took this questionnaire to a lawyer and uh, he asked them so you fill it up they said uh, no you give, give it to me i need time i am busy going to the court all this thing he said aap niche sirf sir, sign kar lijiye main mar dunga right so he simply you know said no 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 right so one from district court you know almost around 50 60 question i asked all no 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 i was surprised then i called this guy i asked him how is that you know no one in the district court knows anything about this is a, you know i can't believe this he said sir even if i ask they are going to say this one only so i have filled it up all these things with no and i got their signature and mobile number right so i had to put it into trash you know all those things i can't rely on such kind of data whatever was collected so that is something ethical issues what the soham was asking in the initially like how do we how do because these kind of ethics ethics means it doesn't mean you know uh, you know getting into somebody's uh, office and stealing the data those kind of ethical issues are larger ethical issues for example if you want to if your research question is based on a data and that data is not accessible then you go to the office bribe a pun there and get the data those are larger ethical issues you understand you know bribing a pun to get the data from an office which otherwise is not accessible to you or another ethical issues again you know the uh, people who are going to the field to collect data most of the time you know just because they have certain targets to attain they will just simply write something and those, those kind of data will also be disastrous for research so we need to be very careful these are some of the ethical issues which i thought i should mention when soham was talking about it thank you so much uh, thank you uh, all of you so hope to meet soon all of you at the campus if things goes fine i think phase 3 should be on campus madam shobhalata madam no so because ugc had given permission to open the university for phd students yes it has it has should the exam we can call them <laughs> call them for some good reasons madam not to examine them and fail them you know don't do that 
understand him. I know, I know, I know. You have such wonderful batch of PhD scholars, very, very, very energetic, young, dynamic, knowledgeable. I am sure that you know. So university is going to be flooded with you know publications in Scopus, Web of Science, and Springer, and all those places. So I think before I retire, I'll see a lot of publications in Springer in Web of Science because of the way that. Uh, the research methodology is going on yes jaydeep sir so someday if you could tell us like what the chief justice of madras did because like you said that you will tell us but that's a very long judgment sir you know because okay. that's fine, they, that's fine, sir i just want to know okay, no, no, maybe what i will do is i'll try and find the judgment and then uh, it must be there in my inbox sometime later i will ask gopal okay. but to share it with all of you huh? it's yes, a very very yes, lengthy yes, judgment because the ultimately they also do not they in fact they he constituted a bench of three judges uh, to answer these queries but then their answers were also not satisfactory they were trying to you know beat around the bush and you know like whatever you said they said the same thing right <laughs> yes yes so they they said that you know um, they can commit to the magistrate and they can presume that this was committed by the magistrate to the person all these you know these things again these are all if if they punish somebody under this law he will go to the supreme court and straight away get a stay on that order because it, it will not stand the legal scrutiny of any 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 thing it's such a bad it's such a bad uh, provision uh, in that law yeah right okay so thank you so much